how the horses got to the island. There's only one way they got here. The Spanish galleons back in the 16th century crashed off Assateague and the ponies swam ashore. There's the really far-fetched. Pirates used to sail the waters here. In North Carolina, that's where they always say the pirates kept. To the most likely. Colonists keeping their horses out here. People used to just turn their livestock loose. When the chicken diggers heard the tax man was coming, they would take him out on acid, they turn loose and say, we don't have any animals. You can see the wrecks offshore of the Spanish galleons. Why is it hard to believe that that's not the truth? I like the ship theory. The same legends are all up and down the coast. There's some question as to whether, you know, we should call these the wild horses of Assateague Island. They aren't really wild. On Assateague, Virginia, we keep the wildest in these ponies 360 plus days a year. The Maryland ponies are truly wild. They don't get handled, they don't get shots. Let Maryland do with, with theirs what they want, and we'll keep ours. They do run without a fence, but they aren't what you consider wild, wild. To humans, to be wild means that you're afraid of humans. We've been rounding these up since about 1925 for the swim and the roundup. 40, 50,000 people come. I think the pony penning is a great slice of Americana, and this is maybe America's oldest continuous roundup. We do not want the population of Chicoteague ponies to get larger than 150 animals. The pony roundup is the way that we control that population here on the south end. We've got two or three days to catch them all and put them in the holding pens. There's only so many guys that get to do this, so I'm just grateful for every chance I get to do it. Over the years, there's a lot of camaraderie. This is the last of the cowboys. I can't say that I know the mind of a horse, but I think they somewhat look forward to it. Last year, they had a couple knew what time it was and actually swam over early. All over the world, people come to see this. When we bring the ponies through town, the way the little kids just you know, clap and cheer, it's just a good feeling. A lot of these kids grew up breeding Misty, and mostly it's the young girls that want to come get into it. The auction is always special. Watching the reaction to these kids when they take the funnies home, it makes you a kid again. If life is not going too good, there's always the ponies, and they'll cheer you up. <laughs> One of the big things we're dealing with right now is sea level rise. And so we're going to see a lot of this island underwater because you're going to end up having the ocean just inundating on both the eastern and western sides. Over the next 50 years, more and more of that marsh habitat will be lost and then the grazing area for the ponies will be greatly reduced. We used to keep ponies grazing here. We used to have full round over the whole beach and now they keep taking acreage away every year. I hope the government will always allow the ponies to be here, but you know, you just never know. In future generations of saltwater cowboys, we're going to have to make a decision. What size of population they can manage and will they continue to keep making the swim across? I just hope it doesn't happen like it did off the coast of North Carolina where one day you'll come in and there'll just be a big pen with some ponies in. I hope they'll always be able to range free like they do and we'll always have pony pens.